Welcome home, home neighbors. neighbors. Welcome home, neighbors. Hello, neighbors. We're listening from Arizona, Florida, Maryland, New York, New Jersey, Indianapolis, California, Utah, Michigan, Iowa, Massachusetts, Georgia, Canada. Our home resort is Animal Kingdom, Polynesian, Bay Lake Town, Old Key West, Lillian, Corbaugh, Kalani Resort, Hilton, Boulder Ridge, Hopper Creek, Grand Floridian, Syracuse Springs, Beach Club, and Wilderness Lodge. And you're listening to And you're listening to my, 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 Well, hi and welcome everybody to this evening's My DVC Points Community Hall Live podcast. Uh, I'm Brad Coates. I'll be your host for the evening, joined by some exciting and very intelligent co-hosts. Uh, but before I introduce them, I do want to take a moment just to thank our sponsor for this evening, DVC Rental Store. Uh, DVC Rental Store has been helping our listeners with renting out their points for years now. Uh, if you need cash for a cruise or maybe get ready to take one of those adventures by Disney trips and you need some money, well, DVC Rental Store will help help you by paying you up to $16 per point uh, to for the points that you would uh, give to them to rent out for you. Um, need some points for a spontaneous vacation, maybe some extra points and you don't have a, enough left? Well, DVC Rental can help with that as well. Or do you want to find out what this whole DVC experience that we keep talking about is really like? You haven't bought yet, but you'd like to get a feel of what it would be like if you owned? Well, there's a great idea. Use DVC Rental. Give them the, the, the resort you'd like to do when you'd like to do it. and They'll get busy and find you a place, rent the points for you, and then give you the price and you'll be able to experience and get a great rate on a deluxe resort at Disney World. So come join the excitement. Come rent, book, and save at dvcrentalstore.com. Well, good evening to my amazing co-hosts for the evening. We're glad that they are joining us. Uh, joining me first up is Mary Ann. Say hi to everybody, Mary Ann. Well, hi, guys. It's I'm so excited to tell you about our experience with a split stay. It was yeah, it's quite a deal. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And then we've got Roxanne. Roxy. How are Hi. you, girl? Good. Hi, everyone. Welcome home. So uh, on this football Sunday, <laughs> watching football <laughs> yeah. all weekend, actually. Uh, well, some of us are Broncos fans, so we could watch <laughs> football a long time ago. So I'm watching Sorry. hockey. You know? <laughs> so as uh, Marianne mentioned, uh, and as you saw in the uh, logo before, tonight we're going to be talking about a topic that is dear to my heart. Uh, we In the pre-show, we were talking with some of you, and uh, we're going to be talking about um, split stays. Uh, I'm, all of us on the show here have done split stays. Uh, I've done so many split stays. I've lost track of how many I've done yep. and there's a right way to do it. And there's a wrong way, right? Marianne. <laughs> 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 and we're here to try to help you to master the art of doing a split stay. Now in the end, it may be for you and it may not be for you, but that's what we're here to do to see if we can't help you with that. Um, you ever been to the point where you wanted to switch hotels in the middle of the vacation or you wanted to see what that other resort was like? Or you're like me, you've got just too few points and you need to split that. You need to stretch those points. Well, a split stay may be a great idea for you. So before I give away all the things we're going to share, let's go ahead and jump right into it tonight. Can we do that, guys? Sure. Um, the very first thing we're going to talk about, first question, is what are the advantages of doing a split stay? Marianne, what would you say are the advantages, one of the one of the advantages? Well, I think for my family, the two reasons that we usually choose a split stay or that we have chosen, let me say that, we have chosen is, let's say, is to try different resorts and get an opportunity to stay at different places. And sometimes it's because, well, we all know that I'm kind of the points miser and I don't like to spend <laughs> my points and I end up using them all, but I want to stay as many nights as I possibly can. But yet the kid wants to stay at least one night with the cool pool someplace. And so I'm always trying to figure out how to make that work. So that was really for me being a points miser is a big part of it and staying at different resorts that we want to have a chance to stay at and sometimes to accommodate our schedule our big foot split stay last year which we moved four times last year in a eight-day trip wow 
and where was it nine days? I don't remember. It was a long trip. It was a long enough trip that it felt like it was reasonable, but I got a deal. Well, because I'm cheap, right? I got a deal. My flight <laughs> was canceled and I could get us in a day earlier on a cheaper flight. So I got money back on our flights or actually it was points because it was on Southwest. So it was points back. And so I was like, Oh, well, we could go a day earlier and I'll just book something else. Oh, so then I had to go look at offsite properties because no DVC rooms were available within three weeks. And we ended up, though, actually that night at All Star, whichever one has the Fantasia pool. That's movies, isn't it? Is it movies? All-star mm -hmm. movies. So yeah. we ended up at one of the all-stars for one night. I laugh when Andrew calls studios flop houses. I'm sorry. <laughs> An all-star is a flop house. <laughs> yeah. So, but that that's my thought, you know, for reasons and advantages to a split stay is to save money and save points and that's try points. try all different kinds of things. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's one of yeah. my main reasons I do split stays is you know, my original contract was only 200 points, but I managed to get a lot out of that 200 points. And the main re way I do it is not just to stay at the le least point places, but to split it. Mm -hmm. And um, so it really helps you out a lot. Yeah. Right? How about definitely, you, Roxy? Definitely does. Oh, there's so many reasons. Um, we did a split stay. We do a lot of split stays. We did a triple split stay. First one, normally we just do two resorts in about seven or eight days. This time we did a triple. We did Started at Riviera, hadn't stayed there. So for the whole Spice of Life uh, crowd, it is nice to try a new resort, right? Mm -hmm. New new excitement. And it kind of makes the excitement of the week looking forward to the second or third resort. Mm -hmm. um, and so then the second one was uh, Beach Club because we love the pool and we own there. And the third one was Copper Creek. And the third one was a cabin. So that is another reason for a split stay or a triple split in our case. We really wanted to try out those those cabins. And I had luckily bought a fully loaded resale contract. And that is another reason for split stays. If you buy a contract and you've got some points banked in there that you got for quote unquote free when you're buying a fully loaded resale contract, you want to use those points. You don't want to use, you don't want to lose them. So I said, let's, let's just go big, go big and go get that cabin for three nights. Um, so that's what we did to use up those points. And that was a really good use of a split stay. Also, well, I, I agree. I think that's, <laughs> yeah, I agree with moving like to the cabin. Yeah. Because gonna who how many of us can no matter how many points you have, how many of us can spend a week in a bungalow? No. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's yep. just not real yeah. reasonable for any of us. No. But one or two nights at the end of a trip where you've yep. conserved points. Oh, that's so smart of you. That was a great and idea. I saved the best room for last that that cabin. I wasn't gonna yeah. do that the first night. I would have been depressed. And that's so, even hard to do on a normal split stay, but when you get all those extra bonus points and that's sitting there, it's mm -hmm. like do it at I'm the end. Do something great since I can right now. So that's yeah. Cool. But on the other side of the coin, one of the other reasons for split stay is I don't have enough points at Beach Club, where one of our three contracts that we own right now, to do a whole week. So if I'm going for a week, we usually do August before school starts. And I don't have enough for seven nights in a one bedroom. Let's say I only have 150 points at Beach Club. Uh, so that was a resale contract we bought. And um, I can book like, call it like four nights. So now the other four nights, you know, three to four nights, I need to do my other resort. I have Copper Creek and I have Riviera. So I've got to do one of those. And then I can either keep it, you know, and do a split stay, keep the split stay or at seven months, like the rest of us try to piece it together and try to get the other four days at beach club or the other four days at Riviera or Pepper Creek. And that's really hard to do. So yeah. sometimes well, you just expanding on, on your point, I'll go to the next one that, that, that I was thinking about. Um, cause it kind of expands on what you're sharing Yeah, is, um, staying on the cheap. Uh, you mentioned it, Marianne, uh, some referred to the studios as flop houses. Hey, I like the studios. They work. And I like them mm -hmm. because they're low in points. And so during the pre-service show, we had somebody that asked, when's a good, uh, when's, how many days should you stay for each stop in a split stay? And honestly, that comes down to your comfort level. Mm -hmm. But for me, I've been known to come in, 
start the day first night because it's for me, I travel so far by the time I get there, that day's done. There's nothing for me to do. So why should I spend a bunch of money on a two bedroom when I could rent a studio at Oak Key West or, or the cheapest mm -hmm. I can find, stay there for the night, then do my travel with the bags being delivered to my next, next resort while I'm in the parks all day. And I save, and I can often save those points. And then I, then I stack the back end of my trip with, with uh, more. And, and I and I like to. What I like to do is come into a studio and then end in a one bedroom or two bedroom, so I have the washer and dryer and mm -hmm. and a lot more space and enjoy. Yes. That but yeah, it's it's about conserving points. I mean, there, there's nothing wrong with that. It's you can be you can be frugal, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and be a Disney fan. I know it feels like you're supposed to show up there and sell a kidney to just pay for everything, but <laughs> yeah, I'd rather save a little points there and spend the money on, on more uh, valuable memories while I'm there. Or I say valuable, but other memories that I can't always experience. So that's kind of what the way I am. That's how I've managed to have a, that 200 point contract and make it feel like it's a 300, 350 point contract for a long time. Absolutely. Yes. And, and I agree that your split stay the amount of days for it, it kind of depends on what the purpose of the split stay is. Right. If it is because you're going to get in late that night and you only have one night, yeah, book that old Key West studio that's going to be super cheap for you that first night. And then move to your BLT theme park view or your Animal Kingdom Lodge Savannah view or whatever your big part of your stay is. That's a great option. I think though the other thing to consider is splitting your trip kind of half and half yeah you know if you've got yes. a seven i don't know that if you're if you're leery about it give yourself at least two or three nights in each room mm -hmm. before because a one day split is rough yeah said by the girl said by the tracy girls who did one night at movies one night at old key west what two nights at saratoga and then five nights back at Old Key West. Yeah. Well, and I would it just I, and I felt would, like it was a lot of moving at the beginning yeah. of our yeah. Trip. And I think if you went back and did it again, Marianne, you'd you'd realize it wasn't the fact that it was a one night. It was a one night, then a one night, then a two night, then a five night. When you're doing mm -hmm. those many short ones, that's hard. Doing it the first night when you really didn't even unpack, you went in, you left your yeah. bags packed, you showered, you put on a new set of clothes, and you just take mm -hmm. off. It's not too bad. But you're right. Splitting up is a good point. Yeah. But you, but having it, giving yourself a little, especially if you're doing it for the first time, giving right. yourself a little bit of balance so that you feel like you've got a little yeah. bit of time there before you move on instead of yeah. – trying yes, to because we had to add that extra couple of days at saratoga because they have reverb refurbed the rooms and we hadn't seen that yet we love our oh, saratoga yeah that was which, the whole which, thing which brings up a good point you mentioned earlier one of the reasons that you like split stays is that element of, of surprise that experience of something new like you've not yes. been to that yep. resort or you wanted to be on yep. the savannah and so you you won't want to spend the whole time there because then you got to ride the buses to every park. So you're at Animal Kingdom to experience something really cool, and that's another good reason, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yep, absolutely. absolutely. Proximity to the parks is a really great reason to pick your split stay. Yeah, to pick your split stay, you know, a couple three days when you're going to be at a, a, a Crescent Lake Resort or the Riviera, where yep. you're going to have lots of easy access to Epcot and Hollywood Studios, and then pick uh, another rest of your stay that you're going to be closer to the Magic Kingdom, so that you can walk or boat instead mm -hmm. of or monorail instead of riding a bus, and then leave your Animal Kingdom day. Just you know, then you can ride an Animal King a bus to Animal Kingdom during that Magic Kingdom time. Yeah. That's yeah. that's so eliminate some of that bus riding time if you were really a bus hater. Yeah, I like so. that. So true, so true. I'm an yeah. Animal Kingdom nut, so I always usually at least Convenient. when I'm going to do Animal Kingdom, I'll stay so I can do that park and have yep. a day off. So and I like that. And leave. Yeah. How about Does you, Watsy? Do you have anything? I'm sorry. I, Go ahead. Unity had anything to say about that because. I'm excited to hear. <laughs> Gina. Yeah. Clean room. A clean room. A clean that's room. Of that's, you know what? And especially now when housekeeping is really limited. Yeah. A, a good split point. stay does guarantee you're going to have a really clean room and fresh sheets. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. That's a that's, that's nice. a really good one. So Roxy, you got any others? 
Yeah. One of the things that I noticed that really works for our family is the art of compromise. <laughs> and when you ask your family, where do you want to stay this trip? And you've get, you know, there's, we have three kids, three teenagers. So we get, we get five different answers <laughs> because there's five of us. And most of the, my family wants to stay at beach club. I would rather stay at Copper Creek because I love the whole, or even Boulder Ridge. I love Wilderness Lodge. I feel very relaxed there. And I also really have learned to love Riviera lately. I'm really enjoying that. <laughs> but but I do really, I always want to stay at Copper Creek and my family wants to stay at, at Beach Club. <laughs> so I'm usually outnumbered. So the split stay does work really well for the art of compromise um, because you get, you guys both get to stay where you want. So that's really nice. And one other thing is bragging rights. I will have to say, I am like many of you in D my DVC points community trying to stay at all 15 my DVC resorts. <laughs> Come on, let's face it. And, yep. and when you finally get to the 15th, you know, you know, because it takes a while to get to Alani and Vero Beach and Hilton Head and, you know, it's, it's a lot to stay at 15 different takes so many years for, for most of us. And uh, then you have those bragging rights that I actually did it. I did all 15 resorts, even if it was just for one night at one of those places. So I'm really excited because I'm trying to get that done and I'm not there yet. <laughs> and me either. So Marianne, you have any others before we move on to the next question? Let's hit our comment, our community. Okay. The split stay allows, Steve says, split stay allows you to focus on one or two at a time. That's right. That's a great one reason. Right. Lawton, Russell, it must be Russell. What's your perk we found? We do two to four nights in a studio, and then we finish with a one bedroom. You get the laundry at the end of the trip, some space to stretch, yes. and you should get to stretch the, we do studios, high points, and low point one bedrooms. That's really smart too. Stay in those fancy resorts in the smaller rooms. That's a really That's good, good idea. Mm -hmm. Ron manages for split stays is the ability to plan your park reservations according to your resort location. Also the ability to stay at different resorts and check them out. And, and be careful. That's that's what will get you buying uh, add-on add contracts right there. <laughs> add-on so, As so you stand it, you go, oh, I got to buy points here. I got <laughs> to own this one. Amanda says she decided to do that a split stay this trip because they wanted to make off some resorts or that they wanted to check off some of those resorts that they haven't stayed at yet and take advantage of the closeness to the parks for each resort. Yep. That's yep. great. Yep. It's perfect. Well, Facebook user wants to love split stay, minimize time on spent on transportation. Half of the stay at Magic Resort and half at the Epcot Resorts works well for them. Yep. Amy says she's not sure she'll ever experience a sl split stay. They are an unpack and get comfortable for the whole long haul type of family. And hubby is an old Key West only guy. We okay. visit the other resorts on our non-park days, though, because the FOMO is real. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Mary says, we almost always split stay between a Magic Kingdom resort and an Epcot resort. They love the convenience of wandering in and out of Epcot. Oh, I do too. And they like to avoid the bus. Walking monorails, boats, or the Skyline are almost always faster than the buses. That is true. Steve yep. likes to stay three days before a move. That's, that's I think, very reasonable. Can, yeah. Good. Definitely. Longer is yep. better. Very reasonable. Yep. And Nick, this is smart. Nick says Thursday, Sunday through Thursday nights at high point chart resorts. And then Fridays and Saturdays yep. move to the That's low excellent. point joint yep. resorts. Yep. What a great yeah, way of smart. saving points. That's a great idea. Yep. Amy says, my husband does not love studios or splits. He also rarely comes with the, comes on an entire trip. We will often studio for a few nights when it's just hit her and, her and move be a ride. An art That's smart. Compromise there. Yeah. That's a yeah. good yep. art of compromise. Yep. For like say for the variety of food options at your resorts. That's a really good That's idea. Too. That's a good point. Yep. yep. It's a whole different experience. Vicky says a tip is never go room for, for, to a better Spoken like a pro, Vicky. That's right. Always yep. the other way around. So you feel like grade to yes. switch birds rather than a downgrade. Smart. That is smart. <laughs> oh, Lowe says, I drove from California to Florida in August. Started three nights at Disney's Vero. Oh, 
that would be after that long drive to relax on the beach and then drove down the, the Cape Canaveral for a day and then home nine nights at Wilderness Lodge and then seven nights at Saratoga and then finally drove home to California. That's a lovely split wow. stay. Vero and then Canaveral and then two weeks at the parks. That's awesome. That's great. So Brad, we'll move on. Okay, I'm typing. <laughs> Note to you, as a matter of fact. So, okay, so yeah, some some, some great ideas there and some great thoughts. Thank you very much. There, uh, you can see, uh, and you heard a lot of the people saying the same things that, that we we're sharing with you. It's not like we're the only ones that have learned this. Uh, it's always good to learn from others. But here's the thing. There are some great advantages to doing split stays, but it's not a perfect experience. There are pitfalls to doing split stays as well, and you can discover them very quickly, can't you? So, um, uh, but, uh, um, Marianne, do you want me to start off with you? Sure. What are some of the pitfalls of your split stay that you experienced you're going to teach us about? <laughs> okay, I have two. I... Like someone else said, is, uh, Amy said, she's an unpack it for the long haul girl. I did not enjoy hunting around and repacking a cup every couple of days when we were making those changes. So I would have to pack completely differently. And I thought I had packed smartly for it, but there was still the find my hat, find the this, find all the things that had gotten kind of all scattered about in two days before we moved on. So that, and I am not a fan of being homeless at Disney world. I like afternoons sometimes to go back to the resorts and enjoy my time at my resort. And I did not like not being able to do that, not being sure that my luggage was going to make it, even though I knew it would, all of those things kind of put a little bit of anxiousness on me. And it was a trip when it was just Katie and I. So it made it a little easier because it, she's my easy go and go with the flow kid. But the and then the last day when uh, amazingly they messed up our uh, they didn't have a room for us. They called us at the parks and old key west did and they didn't have a one bedroom available and they were going to move me down to a studio and i was like well no you're not if you're not giving me back a whole bunch of points because this was the long part of our stay and we purposely picked it for laundry right, right. and having a kitchen yeah. right yeah so i kind of got a little a little Kareny. i felt bad but i was a little Kareny on the phone as i this because this made me nervous and I was like, well, that doesn't really work for me because I paid two bedroom or one bedroom points. So maybe we need to work on with member services, finding me a room at a different resort that is a one bedroom. And um, by the time we had gotten to Old Key West, Rodney, the world's best manager of a resort, had not only found me a two bedroom but added money onto my account for us to spend for dinner and made everything all better. So, Ooh, you know, dust. kudos to, yes. So Katie and I then had a two bedroom at Old Key West for two people. <laughs> I was like, holy cow, this is bigger than my first house was, this room. <laughs> mm -hmm. True. Yeah. But, bigger than my apartment was the first time around, that's for sure. Right. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, the, the anxiousness of mm -hmm. just that anxiousness of things not, and then things not working out like they should have. Yep. And causing me a lot of disconcertation in the middle of the trying to figure all that out was, yeah. was a little rough. And I, I will say it kind of made me think that maybe split stays aren't my thing. So this summer I'm not doing a split stay. I'm comp at a squat the whole time. <laughs> so that's awesome. But the only, uh, and, and the only encouragement I would give to Marianne and to any of you that are nervous about it, not saying, like I said, you, it may not be for you, but two key things about Marianne's trip that probably would have made it uh, a little bit easier. Number one, those problems, they can happen when you're staying in one resort. And unfortunately, things come up 
And we, yeah. we had one where they had our room and then suddenly uh, they didn't have our room for three days. So then we, we turned into a split stake because we didn't want, right? Um, <laughs> but also doing four split stays, somebody asked, you know, how many is too many or how much is it? This is where it gets to that, why he said three days. You know, when you do them too quickly, yep. one right after the, it just starts to take the joy out of the experience. And so, yeah, uh, take a breath, Marianne, maybe another yep. year down the line, try it. Well, you know, it was, it was the, it was the, the other, it was the art of compromise, getting Katie her nights at Saratoga so, that <laughs> yeah, she, exactly. yeah. so she could be in her, she could be Everybody's in her happy. Paddock, <laughs> so her paddock pool, cause she just couldn't imagine going and not spending time at the paddock pool. So, uh, yeah. All those I, highlights we talked about, those advantages, you can't always do them all. So no, yes, no. Pick the yep. two you want to do this time. Yeah. So, what you, Roxy? Oh what my God. Pitfalls you've run into. What immediately comes to mind is the food and the booze situation. Let's talk about that. Okay. Yeah, so you have a have five hour. Yeah, you have a minimum of five hours of undesirable lag time. If you check out at eleven, you can't get into four a lot of time because that is check in, and they were very clear to tell you that. And that is nowadays, the check in. You're lucky if you get oh, in yeah. by four. You they love to. That's the one liner. Oh, check ins yeah. at four. Okay, whatever. Uh, but you do not have a home base for five hours, minimum of five hours. So what do you do with the the food? They will store it for you. Uh, at Beach Club, I had a very nice conversation with Bell Services. Hey, what am I going to do with this food? And I've got beer and wine. And, you know, and they said, we'll store it for you, but we cannot move it over right. for you. You we were going, it. Yeah. And not anymore. Yep. So if you have a car, you know, you can go back at. 10 minutes of four, get your refrigerated alcohol and food and your bagels and cream cheese and all that great stuff and move it over yourself and pray to God at four o'clock you have a room. But if not, uh, when we went from Riviera to Beach Club, we didn't get until 530. So that is my second part because split stays are separate reservations. There is a problem when you try to make your reservations for your dining at 60 days because you can only make your first four days, let's say. Because you have two res two reservations. Two reservations two in the system. Days. Used to be able to call in the good old days. They will not do that for you anymore because of all the pandemic craziness. So that is a major bummer is you cannot make your full weeks, let's call it a full seven days of reservations at 60 days. You've got the food, alcohol situation. Yeah. How are you going to move it over to the new resort? How are you going to keep it cold if you don't have a car? Situation is there as well. And, you know, let's face it, um, you might not get in your room at 4 o'clock. So if you have a dinner reservation, again, with the food and the re reservations, let's say, 6.30, and you've been at uh, Stormalay, Stormalong Bay all day, you need a shower. And if you have five people – and you're in a one bedroom, five people need to take a shower before the 630 dinner reservation. And you can't even get in your room at yeah, four o'clock. Never mind 530. I've missed reservations yep. on the check-in day and had to call and say, I guess we'll just do counter service if you can't take us later. So it's a food and disruption three different ways right there. <laughs> those are all good. And I think we've I've experienced every one of those. Marianne was shaking her head a lot. So I think she probably has uh, little caveats. The, some of those things you learn over time. I finally learned that on those days that we're going to do the swap on that day, I make it not a, not a resort day. We try to make sure we stay in the park. That's the one day that we'll kind of tough it out, stay in the park. We do our dining in the park instead of somewhere else. Yep. So, you know, we just do quick service instead of doing sit downs. We do those things because we know this could turn into a not a fun trip <laughs> real quick if those things start to happen, right? So yes. I was having so much fun. One thing goes wrong and you're just like, I hate Disney. I hate yeah. this experience. We're not doing any more split stays. You're We're all never fighting. doing another split stays. So, Next yep. time. Yep. Well, and the other thing is you got to decide, are you packing the night before if you're a night yep. person or are you a morning person and you're going to get up an extra half hour? But then you have to talk about how do you get your stuff do you go get your own luggage cart? Because if there's five of us, we're not going to slip it down there. We've got all kinds of, you know, laptops and whatnot, regular suitcases. Um, so now you need to call Bell Services. They say give them 30 to 45 minutes. That's what they recommend when you call. And they want to come up to your room and, you know, load it all up for you. Now you've lost 30 to 45 minutes waiting for Bell Services or you're going down to the parking lot, scrounging around for a luggage cart if you can find one, coming back to the room, lugging it yourself down to Bell Services and, um, that is more disruption and packing is never fun. And, you know, security concerns, I've heard people leave things in the safe. And, you know, if you're bringing jewelry, D uh, Disney gift cards, cash, your wallet, and you're leaving it in the safe and you're going to the new resort, 
I've heard stories where people had to go back and say, hey, I left something in the safe. They have a huge procedure at Disney. You need to get the general manager, security, and yourself. All three of you have to go to the room and open the safe. They have to be present. So there is all kinds of uh, security. If you're, you know, you really don't want to leave stuff in your in your car. What if you, someone smashes it or, you know, you're leaving your pocketbook or whatever at Bell Services. You got to trust, right? That's, you have some valuables there. So, well, and, and I would say that, too, when you're talking about that kind of thing, you know, just the whole, the packing up thing also really does depend on your family. You know, it was just Katie and I and Katie's a teenager. Um, if I had a whole crew of little still, there is no way that that yep. would be functionally. Um, the lovey would get left behind. I know for a fact that somebody's blankie would get left behind uh, under a couch cushion somewhere. Right. Because that's just how that works. And that would totally could totally destroy your trip. And so. uh, nap time. Remember when your kids were little oh. and, and they didn't get their nap or, you know, they didn't get to go to the pool and they have a meltdown and, and yep. now they're, you know, yes. screaming, crying because they haven't had a nap and they're way overtired because you didn't have a room. You, you were, get, you, you were really have your to room. Do the makeup of your family and will, will this really work for you? Well, it sounds great to go and do all of this fun, this, and then all this fun, that, and plan for that all the park long day, that rope drop to you know, get kicked out after fireworks day and you, you have a little one throw up on you at two o'clock in the afternoon and your luggage is somewhere in limbo, limbo land. And you're like, Oh, okay. Yeah, I think, I think all of us have, I think all of us have had that experience or, or maybe not you, but you've observed somebody in the park. Yeah. I paid a lot of money for this. You're going to enjoy it. <laughs> take you out and make another one that looks just like you. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and and yeah. there's this angst. Why? Because because you know what, kids kids change the dynamic. It well, does. trust me. When it comes to a split stay, if you have small children, it completely will change the dynamic of a split stay. Guys, not a good strategy. All the guys out there, we we can see it on paper, and it looks like a great idea. It may not be a great idea. I'm telling it, you that yeah. two o'clock in the afternoon throw up happened to me. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it's I don't not fun. But I had that one, but I think I had that one, but I, 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 I forgot it as fast as I could. So and yeah. let's, you know, then you got to unpack when you get there. So that's another pitfall, right? You're where's my yep. toothbrush? Someone wears contact lenses. I can't find my saline. Where's my con you know, there's all kinds of disruption and everyone's like, I can't find this, I can't find that. I know I had it. So now you got to get the food in the um any kind of beer or whatever <laughs> yeah. in that fridge really quick and get it cold again because you know, nobody wants warm drinks or warm water. So and, well, for families, of, and for oh, families with littles, that's a lot of work on mom. Let's be real. Mom, yeah, big, mom, you just need to know that going in. A lot of work. Yep. So what we got here, Marianne? Nikki says that one of the pitfalls ideas. to her is the waste of time packing up to move rooms. It's more than an hour when we at the pool. Yeah. That, yeah. Hung says a pitfall. As being homeless on your travel <laughs> days and not being able to book ADRs for the entirety of your stay. Yep. Yeah, that's true. Yep. And they no longer transfer refrigerated <sighs> items. And that is a big problem for some families. I think I have a workaround, but I there there are and it would be a big pain in the patootie. So yep. Rebecca has already started packing for a split stay and she is trying to pack for each leg. Yep. 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 Split stays are great if you have a car. Lo, you are right about that. Yeah. And they are easier to deal with if you have a car. She let, Amy let Disney move her luggage once and it was a disaster. Now oh. we take the cold stuff to our resort and leave the rest in our car. Vicky says she, it's not a pitfall, but she understands that you may not be able to adequately immerse yourself in the resort if you move to another after a short stay. Split stays are good for sampling resorts you're unsure about. That's true. That's yes, it. definitely. Exactly. And it, Lo agrees that it really depends on the age of your family. Yes. I think it's better for teenagers, obviously, but yeah. And it's It'll more of an there. adventure, you know, like, woohoo, we're trying a different place. And then the teenagers go around without the parents. They kind of get the lay of the land and come back and tell you, hey, what, look what I found. And and they have kind of a little fun with it. Yeah. But absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Check out the pools. 
So we've had a, several of the folks that were sharing some great thoughts and uh, we want to share with you some tips and tricks because there are some tricks. If, if it's okay, I'm going to start it out with one because I think it was Rebecca just talked about the um, packing for each leg. Mm -hmm. To me, that that's the single most valuable tip I can give you that's made split stays so much easier for us. And that is um, we pack you know, we, we almost always fly Southwest. So we basically always have two bags, even if we didn't need two bags, <laughs> we have to, because we plan on filling them up coming home. I have three women in my life and it gets packed up with stuff that got bought. That's the way it works. So uh, I say that I'm spending more than they are. So <laughs> who am I kidding? But, um, so we will take two suitcases and we will pack the one suitcase for the, for the stay of that resort. Now here's, a, here's another little tip. Um, you don't have to totally make sure you've divided everything out into both baggage. Okay. Both luggage. Um, what I normally do, uh, because we travel so far, as I mentioned before, we will get there. And that first night is just kind of a relaxing night, usually in the resort. And, and I will take time that evening, but while I'm kind of winding down before I go to bed, I will take out both of my suitcases and then I sort everything out there. I don't sort it at home when I fly there. I sort it in the room. It takes me about 30 minutes to go, okay, I'm going to need four outfits. One, two, three, four. I will need all of my sundries. I put those in the, in the bathroom. And I, I put out every, put out everything I'm going to use and then put the things I'm going to need into the one bag. Then I simply close up the other bag and put it away. Then in that one bag, as I'm using things, I put those the clothing into the drawer. And, uh, and then as I use clothes, I throw the dirty clothes into the empty bag. Mm -hmm. And then in that bag, that's where I'll put all the sundries uh, that aren't uh, medications and things that I'll take in a day bag, make sure I have anything that would be of critical importance. I put in a day bag, but everything else, I just quickly throw in that bag. So for me, packing um, to go to the next resort, uh, 15, 20 minutes, because that's all set up. And then I just wear it. And I don't make packing a part of my travel experience. I packed when I came and then while I'm there, I just that, but that's just, that's to me, that's one of the tips that I would offer. How about you, Marianne? So my family, we, you all know, we use packing cubes. And so if I'm doing to do a split stay, I'm going to pack everybody's clothes for each split of the split stay in a different color of packing cube so that we oh, know cool. immediately. Okay. And I also, I'm, I'm that girl. I might have a spreadsheet that has, um, but actually, What's it's not what? a spread What's stake, what? spreadsheet. It's handwritten in a notebook because I don't really love the computer. <laughs> that Monday, we're all wearing this. Tuesday, we're all wearing the matching Encanto shirts I just bought for Animal Kingdom. Third Wednesday, we're all wearing this. So I might be a little bit planning clothing-wise a little bit like that. We are too, Mary Ann. So... It does make it easier for a split stay then too, because I do have my days all set up and that's how I pack. Um, and so I think that helps in having multiple suitcases again, because we we're from far, far away too. And we fly Southwest. Um, I will probably have two to three suitcases depending on how many of us are going and that kind of thing to have kind of the balance. I will tell you, it's my rebel scum that throw a monkey wrench into my packing up to move for a split stay. The, the rebel scum teenagers who can't stick with the program because you know <laughs> that that's just who they are. But overall that is a big part of it. But my biggest tip for transfer day is this. If you are not normally a backpacks at the park kind of person, this is the day you have your big old backpack yep. and in that big old backpack you have an extra change of clothes for everybody you have a swimsuit for everybody make sure yes. you put the extra yes. sunscreen and sunscreen hair, hairbrush hair ties all of your rechargeable chargers are charged and in there so that you can recharge your devices on the go and bring your all the devices. Go ahead and this is the one day to bring your iPad to the park. Because if you get stuck at 530 still mm -hmm. waiting with somebody who's whiny at you, even, <laughs> even teenage rubble scum, you can hand them an iPad and say, just go. 
<laughs> just go with the electronic babysitter for a few minutes. Yep. This is the sure. one day it's probably worth it. I don't care to carry a bag to the parks. In fact, we try really hard now that we have teenagers to say, everybody bring a water bottle. Let's go. Bingo. Yeah. Yeah. But that's that split day, though. And it is things. And make sure you bring your swimsuits because you can still swim at the new resort even if you don't have a room and maybe that'll kill an hour to an hour and a half for you instead of in the lobby going twiddle, 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 twiddle. Mm -hmm. Although sometimes you get your room faster if you're waiting in the lobby. I don't know. True. So there's that being too. problematic, but don't do that. Don't. <laughs> but don't do that. Just go swim in the pool. Right. Just go swim in the pool. Be nice. Right. Roxanne, what do you got to share with us? All here? right. So yeah. on our split stays, we do not unpack into the drawers. We live out of the suitcase. I bring each each person. So there's five of us. Each each of us would have a laundry bag. It could be a one of those white 13 gallon trash bags for like hair. In right. each of the five bags, and the dirty clothes go in there, and the clean stuff stays in the suitcase. We do not unpack it into the drawers. That is the first thing we do. We live out of our suitcases with the clean bag and the regular stuff in the suit in the regular suitcase still folded or rolled. And then we, the day we're moving, what can you not live without for minimum of five hours? I put everything in that one bag. I have um, like toothbrush holders. Every Those go in there. Saline for the contacts, glasses, um, bathing suits, chargers, the stuff you need and want to get unpacked quick right when you get checked in. Toothbrush, toothpaste, that kind of thing, right? Um, and the bathing suits, obviously, we want to go swimming usually while we're waiting for the room. And I also make sure that same thing. A lot of people are saying that we do keep just kind of keep your patience. Don't lose your cool. You're there to have fun. You're there to be relax and be on vacation. Um, don't get upset if you didn't get, you know, I put in a room request and why didn't I get the one I wanted? Or when you check in the room, not a hundred percent clean the way you want, or there's some deferred maintenance, that kind of stuff. It can all be, you can call and put in a request. It's not a big deal. Um, be polite, but firm is kind of how I say, how I deal with any kind of issues that come up. You know, I'm very polite. I don't, you know, get rude to the cast members or doing the best they can. It's yes. a lot, but just, you know, don't lose your cool and just try to go with it. You know, sometimes you don't get in your room right at four. Sometimes you get in early. Sometimes you get the room you want that you requested. Sometimes you don't, you have to kind of, you kind of have to be flexible. It's, and you are getting a lot of pros from doing the, the, uh, you know, the split stage, you're getting the adventure and the excitement of trying out multiple resorts in one week and banging them off the list. So that is great. Like you're making huge progress to see what are the resorts I like and want to go back. And what are the ones that, you know, I just not for me, I don't think we'll go back to that one. So yeah. from yeah. when we talk, we talked a little bit about moving food and how to do it, but another thought that I had about the food issue, especially now that they're not transferring food. If it's a, sh if you're going to do a split stay, do a little bit or smaller room split stay at the beginning and have your grocery delivery happen on the of your split. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, so we've it, done that multiple, <laughs> multiple times because the back end of ours is almost always like a two bedroom or where we can mm -hmm. cook. Mm -hmm. So that's where we'll order our groceries. The front side, yeah, is, yeah bottle and water and stuff. We like also that. leave like, well, say we buy four cases of Dasani because, you know, you just go through tons of water in the summer there and I buy cases of it so cheap um, at like Publix or whatever. I We leave maybe three cases in the car. I'm not going to lug four cases mm -hmm. in for three nights. I'll start with a no. case, get it cold. Then the next place, put another case in the fridge, get that cold. So I always have, try to keep the water cold. Exactly. So do you think our community has some good ideas? They're probably, they are. What do you think? Ah, uh, the zip yes. day. Lock packer, I discovered packing cubes and I block. Tuesday. Nice. You know, the whole thing. <laughs> That's a well, I think always we... try to switch resorts on park days and also use cubes or different bags for each stay if possible. Okay. With things. Marianne, I may need to take over reading. Our... You're glitching in and out, girl. 
Yep. So she's saying, so Caleb saying do Epcot on the uh, switch day. That's a good idea because now they're not opening, what, till 11? Yeah, that's a good point. Then you got yep. more time. That's really good, Caleb. That's really good. Yep. What else we got? Pretend that you will, you won't see that luggage ever again. How can you survive for two days? And what will you bring? Yeah, that's what I say to my teenagers. It's a total, what can you not live without? Put this in this bag right here. Otherwise, bring it to Bell Services. I don't want to see it. <laughs> I love his last line though. Is it a potential opportunity? <laughs> Remember I said I brought that space in my suitcase? That's what I'm talking about, Niche. That's it. Yep. Right there. Fill yep. that dude up. Is your name Niche, by oh, the way, Nick. or is it actually Rich? It's Nick. It's, it's Nick. Nick. Okay. okay. And a... Nick will will we have to we have to we have to get really do. It's... <laughs> All right. Okay, so uh did we any uh, before we wrap this up was there any other things that we wanted to talk about um maybe uh Marianne you talked a lot earlier about solving some of those issues on the fly cuz some things are going to happen. You know, they happen in any stay at Disney, but they definitely they can happen in split stays and they can overwhelm you quickly if they do. So yeah. I think the first breath and it will work out. It will. I don't know if you have the numbers stored in your phone. But I actually have member services number actually stored in my phone. So I don't have to go to the to find member services number, including the uh, extension for my favorite member services person is in oh, my phone. Mm -hmm. um, I also try to hunt down actual members, of the resorts instead of just the go. front desk, get the front desk number to the resort you're staying in, put it in your phone instead of just the clearinghouse number that to the corner right helps a lot. you know just knowing that it's all gonna work out in the end and that you know my my motto is kind of like roxanne's it's um fair firm and you know yeah. and it depends on what the situation is which order those words come out of my mouth you know <laughs> is it a little more firm you know friendly maybe but fair firm and friendly always seems to work mm -hmm. well, and, but, and, Go ahead. and we're the family that never have always relied on disney transportation so for us the i uh, food thing was the big game change they stopped yeah. moving food that mm -hmm. made me really stop and think about how i'm going to handle a split stay from now on so mm -hmm. easier well, with a car guests, <laughs> yeah one of the guests mentioned about you know taking a deep breath and yeah. remembering where you are and everything here's the thing so the stuff starts to come unravel you you have a choice in life you do this is mm -hmm. just this is the other side of brad speaking you know is, is the glass full half full or half empty, you know, if it starts to rain on your parade, then, you know, go out and splash in the puddles. I mean, maybe this is a good evening now to turn it into something different. Just mm -hmm. make, uh, do something that you didn't have on the plan that you, you, you didn't have locked in, but you know, maybe today, well, we, we don't normally go to the, uh, the d dining fork in downtown Disney, but we're going to today because we got time to kill. Let's go watch a movie and sit down and have a meal while we watch. We don't get to do that in our little town, man. That's, that's like my kid's favorite thing. One, one year we went, I said, what was your favorite thing about this year's trip? And they said the fork and dine. I'm like, you're kidding me. A movie theater. <laughs> Seriously. I spent all that money for you to like a movie theater. My, oh, my, no. my nap. My yeah. nap almost always on our fly out day is our Disney Springs, including a day at the AMC theater. And go. I never see the movie because I fall asleep 10 minutes in. So <laughs> you know, just just go with it. It's yeah. okay. Um, that's things happen. And and uh, and you heard it here. You heard a couple, and I won't get into my whole story. I think I don't did you have you guys ever heard what happened when my wife had had to have surgery? When we were out there and oh my God. and mine fell apart, completely unraveled, and my guest services person actually rocked it with with mm -hmm. pixie dust. I have a two night club level stay at any resort I want. Oh, awesome. because I lost my club level and da 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 da. And they and they but here's the thing: Disney pretty much will always find a way to go above and beyond to make things right for you. But my experience is. 
Some people think you're going to get the most results by being ugly. I just think you're going to get the best results by being pleasant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Figure out a way to respect the people that are trying hard to make it better for you. It's not their fault. And, uh, and if the split day starts to go south, don't, don't say, well, I'll never again. Just say, well, <laughs> I learned from this one. I, when they do the next uh, podcast, I've got some points I want to make. <laughs> <laughs> This is an interesting uh, idea of using your split stay day or moving day to really spend some time on Genie Plus stacking. Mm -hmm. So you're in your room in the morning, you're kind of taking a relaxing, you know, way of building out, packing up, but at the same time, building out your afternoon dis Genie reservation. Yeah. So that you have. Plus. Yeah. Yeah. So you so have stacking. some of those Genie Plus. You can go into a park then in the afternoon and just kill it. Yeah. And that's actually a good idea. That mm. is. Quick, quick point for those that may not be catching what that is. There's a two hour rule yep. on Genie Plus. You make a reservation, then two hours later, even if you haven't used that reservation, you can book another one. And so there, that's what they're saying. Maybe at seven, you book your first one. And then as long as it's out past nine, you know, you could book the second one and you'll have two of them to do and book the third one. Yeah, that's a good point. By the time you get to the park, you've already got them all lined out. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. You could have three or four really stacked mm -hmm. nicely for you before you even arrived at a park. So yeah. that's actually a really good idea. Yeah, you have to think of this all as a little adventure. You know, you're you're moving exactly. around, you're trying different themes, different vibes, your new look and feel, rooms, layouts. I mean, it's all just a little adventure. That it is. The right attitude to go in with Split Stay. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, on behalf of uh, of our beloved leader, Chad, I want to say to, to Marianne and Roxy and to Gina in the background, thank you so much for helping to make this a very special show tonight. And thank you to all of you that have tuned in. We, we, we love doing this, but trust me, we wouldn't enjoy it at all if we didn't have you. You're the reason that we do this and we're grateful that you're here and we, we, we love your information. We were here to give you ideas and there you were giving us ideas right back. And that's what makes our community great. So stay plugged in on my DVC points and we look forward to seeing you again in our next broadcast. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. <laughs>